<laughs> now listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed starring Robert Young as Father. to Springfield and another half-hour visit with the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons, Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim, as the head of this typical American household again sets out to prove that father knows best. Creditors, declared Benjamin Franklin, have better memories than debtors. And creditors are a superstitious sect, great observers of set days and times. Jim Anderson is, at this moment, experiencing confirmation of Franklin's theory as he sits at the desk in the den of the white frame house on Maple Street and checks through the mail, consisting mainly of those never-ending, always punctual, bills. Like this. Milk bill, 2475. Margaret, isn't this a pretty big milk bill? Well, that bill includes butter, too. Oh, no wonder. My gosh, another bill from the cleaners. Seems like I just paid the last one a couple of days ago. Mommy! Thirteen dollars. Aren't we carrying neatness a little too far? About the only thing we've been sending out to the cleaners lately is your suits. Oh. <laughs> well, a man has to look decent at work. <laughs> clothes box just about filled. Can you help me find something else to go in it? Well, let me think, Kathy. What's this about an old clothes box? It's for our Sunday school class. We're having a drive. Going to help some people that need clothes. Could you get our name on that list? <laughs> Kathy, I didn't say you could have this dress. I still wear it. If you don't mind, kitten, I'd like my sports shirt back. I'd like to wear it at least twice before you give it away. I think you'd better put these things back and start all over again. Oh, shucks. Where else can I look for old clothes? Well, you were looking in the right place. It just happens we're still wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> Try the attic and the garage. Oh, all right. If any of the things need buttons or patching, I'll fix them up. Okay. Oh, I've got to get back to these bills. Oh, say, here's a letter for you, Margaret. Oh, well, it's from your Aunt Ethel. Oh, good. I've been expecting that. <laughs> I haven't thought of her in years. <laughs> oh, how she distrusted me. She was sure you were marrying a strictly no-good character. <clears throat> oh, it wasn't as bad as all that. Why is she writing to you? To find out if I've deserted you and left you destitute? No, she's just stopping in for a visit. What? She's passing through on her way to Zion National Park. She wrote last week and wanted to know when would be a good time to visit us, and I wrote back and told her to wait a couple of weeks. Should have made that a couple of years. I wanted to have time to get the house fixed up. That's why I sent the Davenport and chairs out to be recovered. Oh. Well, when has she decided to come? Oh, my goodness. What's the matter? Did this letter just come today? Well, yes. Uh, not come to think of it, I've been carrying this mail around for a day or so. Oh, Jim, Jim. Well, what's the trouble? She says she's going to be here the 5th. That's today. Today? Oh, dear, if I'd only known this, I'd never have sent the furniture out. Why didn't she wait a couple of weeks like I suggested in my letter? Well, you know Aunt Ethel. Well, I guess I'll just have to explain to her where the furniture is. She won't believe it. Explaining anything to that woman is like squirting a seltzer bottle at the ocean. <laughs> Oh, dear, this would happen. I'll never forget the first time I saw her. She drove that Pierce arrow of hers up in front of your house and went inside. I came along, saw the car starting to roll down the hill, so I jumped on the running board and set the brake. Just then she came tearing out of the house. And to this day, she's convinced that I was stealing her car. <laughs> I wonder if I could borrow some furniture. I explained till I was blue in the face. Just a Davenport would help. 
She just kept saying, oh, yes, yes, of course, I understand. But you knew darn well she didn't believe a word of it. Mom. I think I'll run across the street and see if Mrs. Davis will lend us hers. Mom, what do you want me to... Oh, hello, Dan. You home? <laughs> no, I'm bear hunting in the African belt. <laughs> Why are you dragging a shovel through the house? I just came in to ask Mom where she wanted me to dig that trench for the sweet peas. Bud, I told you I wanted the trench dug alongside the back fence, right between those two stakes I put in the ground. That's what I thought, but I wanted to be sure. Jim, I'm going to run over to Mrs. Davis's. I'll be right back. Okay. <sighs> oh, here, Bud, don't sit down. You've got work to do outside. Oh, gee, Dad, I I've got to have a little rest. Digging ditches is hard work. But you haven't done it yet. I know, but I might be too tired to rest after I get it done. <laughs> well, why don't you get out there and see? Okay. What are you doing, Dan? Oh, I'm trying to pay a few bills here. But I'm running out of checks. Now get that shovel out of here and get it to working. Mother! How much do you think this digging job ought to pay? I don't know. Oh, hello, Father. Where's Mother? Across the street, borrowing a Davenport for Aunt Ethel. What? And don't ask me to explain that. What are you doing carrying around an armful of weeds? Oh, these aren't weeds. They're vitamins. Oh? You can buy them right in the bush now, huh? Oh, I didn't buy these. They're carrot tops, and they're simply reeking with vitamins. And Mrs. Liggett was going to throw them away. Think of that. Well, I hope word doesn't get around that my daughter goes about picking up old carrot tops for her father's supper. <laughs> yeah. Father, what are we having for dinner tonight? How should I know? Ask your mother. Probably a lot of cook stuff. Well, I don't anticipate sitting down to a plate of raw pork chops. <laughs> well, I didn't say pork chops. We should eat a lot of raw vegetables, especially leafy ones. I like leafy potatoes. <laughs> Ralph said that we... Oh, it's Ralph again Well, Ralph is a very intellectual young man He's utterly crawling with brains Oh, I knew there was something wrong with him <laughs> Ralph says we're all dying of malnutrition and don't know it Because we're not eating enough carrot tops well, I checked with Mrs. Davis, and she... Oh, Mother, can we have something raw for dinner? What? It seems that Ralph has taken over our kitchen to save us from starvation. Ralph's full of vitamins. <laughs> Bud, haven't you gone out to dig that sweet pea trench yet? Well, I was going to, but Dad hasn't figured out how much he's going to pay me for it. When did I say I was going to pay you? <laughs> My goodness, do you have to be paid for every little thing you do around here? Seems to me you'd do it just to help a little. Mommy, I got my old clothes box filled. Can I take it over and leave it at the church? Hey, what's my sweater doing in there? Give me that. Don't take it. Hey, give it. me my jeans. Get my hunting jacket out of there. <laughs> Aw, heck. The box is empty again. Kathy, I told you not to take things out of our closets. I couldn't find anything anyplace else. <laughs> well... Go around the neighborhood. Ask around at different houses. Oh, okay. I wonder where she found Dad's hunting jacket. I hunted for that all last summer. Bud, please go out and dig that trench. Well, uh, if I was going to get paid, uh, how much do you think the job would be worth? It's worth 50 cents to me to get rid of you. Okay, it's a deal. <laughs> Mother. What is it, Betty? We've got to watch our nutritional intake. Well, I don't have time now, Betty. Aunt Ethel is coming. What are we and... having for dinner tonight? Uh, I don't know yet, but I want to plan something extra special. Maybe you can go out and start peeling some potatoes. Peeling them? Mother, we've got to stop peeling away all the minerals and vitamins. <laughs> well, all right. Put them in the oven and bake them then. Well, I'll put them in the oven, but Ralph isn't going to like it. Well, we'll throw Ralph a raw artichoke next time he comes around. <laughs> I wonder what would be good to have for dinner tonight. Could we afford steaks? 
we can afford anything that will impress Aunt Ethel. The sky's the limit. How did you make out with Mrs. Davis? Well, she was perfectly willing to let us have the Davenport, but honestly, it's in worse condition than ours was. Well, maybe we can keep her out of the living room as much as possible. It'll work out. I hope so. Well, I'd better get out in the kitchen and... Oh, no. What's the matter? Here's a second notice from the gas and electric company. I paid this bill a couple of weeks ago. What's the matter with that outfit anyway? Well, don't get so excited about it. Just some little error. But there's no excuse for it. And I don't like their attitude. They say if it's not paid within 24 hours, they'll shut off both the gas and electricity. Well, my stars, don't let that happen tonight of all nights. You'd better drive down there and pay it right now. I've already paid it. Well, pay it again. This is no time to argue. Nothing doing. When you know you're right, stick to your guns. I'll just call them up. Hand me the phone book. No, Jim. Don't do anything that's going to get our gas and lights turned off. Aunt Ethel will probably be here any minute. Don't worry. That and... turning off business is just a threat. With an old customer like us, they wouldn't dare turn them off. Mother! What is it, Betty? Nothing works. The oven won't go on, the hot water's cold, and there are no lights. <laughs> no gas? No lights? Well, old customer, what now? <laughs> the Andersons will be back in a moment. It used to be said that the pen was mightier than the sword. But today we have found that the pen is mightier than the radio broadcast, the commissar and all the other means by which the Soviet Union has been spreading anti-American propaganda throughout Europe and Asia. When the pen is in the hand of friend writing to friend, of son writing to father, of cousin writing to cousin, when it tells the simple, honest truth about the way Americans live, work, and think, it can undermine a mountainous barrage of false propaganda. Keep the truth about America alive in Europe and Asia through letters to friends and relatives abroad. When you know you're right, stick to your gun. A worthy motto which Jim Anderson has accepted and even given a modern and practical application as follows. If you've paid the light and gas bill once, don't pay it again. Ah, yes, the white frame house on Maple Street has become the watchtower of principle and rugged determination. It is also a watchtower with no gas or lights. <laughs> with Margaret's Aunt Ethel due for a visit, this shortage of facilities seems to have Jim and Margaret on the horns of a fair-sized dilemma. Like this. If there's anything that burns me up, when I pay my bills on Dear, time... Dear, I don't run the power company. It's a matter of principle, Margaret. When I have these stubs to prove it... Hey, Dad, where's the shovel? I've got it right here in my checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you want, bud? I, I think I left it there in the den. For goodness sake, where are you, bud? Here, outside the window. Oh, there's the shovel leaning against the lamp. Oh, that's a perfect place for the shovel. <laughs> you gonna be needing it, Dad? Well, I might want to spade up the living room. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding, aren't you? <laughs> of course, Bud. Come and get it. Now, Margaret, uh, if I... Hand it to me through the window, will you, Dad? Bud, we're trying to talk in here. Besides, we can't hand it through the screen. I'll get a screwdriver and take the screen off. <laughs> Bud, come in the house and get the shovel. Okay. Jim, I should be starting dinner. All right, I'll call the power company. I'll pay the bill, but wait till I go down there tomorrow morning. If it weren't for your Aunt Ethel, I wouldn't do this. I'd sooner... Hello. Uh, this is James Anderson, uh, 607 Maple Street. Our gas and lights were shut off, uh, by mistake. Uh, will you send a man out right away to turn them on? Uh, not tomorrow morning, tonight, right now. Daddy! Shh, 
She's telephoning. Well, this is urgent. It's it's an emergency. Uh, uh, thank you. What did they say, dear? All the men are out. They're going to get somebody here as soon as they can. Look, Daddy, I got some clothes already from the Phillips. Yes, kitten. Now let's uh, get things spruced up a little. Tidy up the front yard. I got a fur muff and a pair of overshoes and some old football pants. Well, that's going to make a beautiful outfit for somebody. (laughs) (laughs) Now run along, Angel. I'm going to get a lot of stuff, boy. Margaret, what time does uh, Ann Ethel's train get in this evening? She isn't coming on the train, dear. She's driving. Wouldn't you know that of all days Aunt Ethel would pick this particular day? I'll bet she ignored your letter on purpose. Plans to sneak up on me. Oh, it's not that, dear. She predicted I'd never amount to a hill of beans. Wouldn't she be tickled to find us flat broke? Don't be silly. Well, I'm going to pull a surprise on the old girl. We'll solve the living room furniture problem and the gas and lights with one brilliant strategic move. We'll take Andy out to dinner. The most expensive place in town. I'll really splurge. Uh, Jim. I'll buy her an orchid corsage. We'll go to the theater, get the best seats. Jim. Later, we'll take her to a nightclub, ringside table. I'll have the orchestra play her favorite tune. Money will flow like water. (laughs) I'll show Aunt Ethel how wrong she was about me. Jim. How much money do you have with you? Oh, I've got, uh, for Pete's sake, 39 cents. <laughs> if you're going to have money flowing like water, it isn't going to be very deep. <laughs> I forgot to cash a check today. Do you have any money? I bought groceries today. I have 12 cents. Margaret, there must be some money in the house someplace. Well, Kathy dropped a nickel down the furnace last winter. <laughs> <laughs> Betty! Do you have any money? No, but we have some maple syrup. (laughs) Maple syrup? What do you want honey for? (laughs) I didn't say honey, I said money. Oh, no. I had to chip in to help Ralph buy some new spark plugs. Oh, great. Dear, maybe Ed Davis could cash a check for you. Ed's out of town, and I don't even have a check. Hey, Mom. Where are you, bud? At the window. (laughs) There's a car out in front and a lady looking at the front of our house with binoculars. (laughs) What's this? She looks like my history teacher. (laughs) Only tougher. It's Aunt Ethel. With binoculars? She's nearsighted, probably looking for our house number. Oh, no. Uh, Bud, get in the backyard. Margaret, you go to the door. But, dear... Don't get excited, Margaret. We'll simply act as if everything is perfectly all right. We have a fairly nice house and... Dad, the lady's up on the porch pushing the doorbell, but nothing happens. (laughs) Oh, no electricity. Go to the door, Jim. I have to get this apron off. But, Margaret... All right. I'm not afraid of her. Well, Aunt Ethel... Broke my glasses in Baltimore. Is that you, James? Sure, sure. Come on in, Annie. Mm. Why, I swear you look younger than you did 20 years ago. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me take your coat, Annie. <laughs> oh, well, you haven't aged much, James. Of course, you never were one to worry. Well, I haven't much to worry about anymore. We've been pretty lucky. <laughs> yeah. well, it takes a lot of money to keep up a house like this, I suppose. You working now, James? (laughs) Oh, yes. I'm in business for myself. I have my own insurance office. Mm, Well, I suppose it'll lead to something better. And Ethel. Well, Margaret, dear, bless your heart. Oh, it's so good to see you. Oh, my, you look well, Margaret. Of course, I always said you were the prettiest of all the girls. You get that from your mother's side of the family. Don't you think Jim looks well, Andy? Yes. And he says he's doing well, too. Oh, yes, Jim's done very mm-hmm. well. You rent this house, do you, James? Oh, no, no, it's ours. We bought it. Oh, well, you've changed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I saw you was before you were married, and you just pawned your saxophone to pay your room rent. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, it's pretty hard now to believe that anything like that ever happened to me. <laughs> well, uh, what would you like to do, Auntie? Uh, drove all the way from Cleveland today. I'd like a nice hot bath. Hot <laughs> bath? Uh, why don't we all get in the car and take a drive around town? No, I, I think I'd like a nice hot bath first. Um, we have a little problem, Auntie. You see, the, uh... The, uh, hot water heater broke down just this afternoon. The man's on his way out to take care of it. I'm awfully sorry. Oh, well, don't worry about it. Well, I'm glad you understand. Oh, just heat up a kettle of water on the kitchen stove. <laughs> uh, just a minute. The, uh, trouble with the water heater is the, uh, gas, you know. The, the, for some reason, the gas isn't coming through the pipes. <laughs> No gas? Uh, pipes seem to be stopped up uh, someplace. The man will be here any minute. Well, Father, guess what? I found some money for you. <laughs> oh, Betty. A whole dollar. <laughs> What's this? Uh, Aunt Ethel, this is our older daughter, Betty. Oh, she's a pretty girl. Oh, how do you do? Mm. Mother's told me so many nice things about you, Aunt Ethel. Really? Oh, here's the money, Father. It's all I could find in my purse, but you're welcome to it. Uh, Princess, wait. Oh, and I couldn't use the stove, so I'm making a cold salad out of those carrot tops I found. <laughs> Well, Aunt Ethel, you see... This is going to be the best meal we've had in weeks. You're all going to love it. Betty's all excited about raw vegetables. She brought these things home, Annie. We, we don't have to have <laughs> carrot tops. Oh, I know. We, we can have anything we want. This is just a fad, you know. Oh, yes. I understand. <laughs> <coughs> Margaret, Betty looks a little thin. Are the children eating well? Oh, of course. Uh, this is just hey, one Dad, of those... I, I finished my job. But you shouldn't come in the house in those dirty clothes. Well, I couldn't change them. I'm too hungry. Aunt Ethel, uh... <laughs> This is our son, Bud. Well, quite a boy. How do you do? I wouldn't have come in like this if I'd known you were here. Well, what have you been doing? Digging a ditch. <laughs> Gee, Dad, that's a hard way to earn 50 cents when a guy's hungry. But I didn't tell you that you... Somebody's knocking on the front door. I'll get it. Margaret, isn't Bud a little young to be working on the streets? Auntie, he was digging a ditch in the backyard so I can plant sweet peas. Believe me, Aunt Ethel, we, we don't eat carrot tops. Uh, I didn't send Bud out to earn 50 cents. We have plenty of everything. I, I, I'm doing fine. Hi, Daddy. It was me at the door. Gee, the neighbors were real nice to me. <laughs> Look at all the swell clothes I got around the neighborhood. <laughs> Kathy, your Aunt Ethel is here. Oh, how do you do? You say you're gathering up old clothes, Kathy? It's a Sunday school drive, a Sunday school. The, the whole class is doing it. I got a coat that's just your size, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy. Look, it's just got some holes in the sleeves. And Mommy said she'd patch up anything I got. Angel, take the things out, please. And look, Mommy. Shoes. <laughs> Excuse me, Aunt Ethel. I gotta show this sweater to Bud. Addie, she didn't bring those things home for us. <laughs> you understand that, don't oh, you? Yes, James. I understand. You don't have to explain. It's it's her Sunday yes, school. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, excuse us a moment, please, Aunt Ethel. Uh, Come in the den, Margaret. Don't 
Don't tell me, Jim. I know. Margaret, what am I going to do? That woman is sitting there in that empty living room, absolutely convinced that I haven't a nickel, that I'm starving my children. I tried to explain, dear. She keeps saying she understands. She understands. I'm right back to the day I tried to save her car. I'm still an auto thief. <laughs> Look, dear, is it so important after all what she thinks? You know you're right, so what does it matter? That's not the point. I have a certain pride as the head of this household. I've worked 20 years for what we have here. And then to have somebody thinking I've wasted my life. Who is it? It's me, Ethel. May I come in? If she's coming in here to tell me that she understands. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come in, Auntie. Well, I have to be going along, Margaret. Aren't you staying? No, I, I want to make Hillbrook tonight. Before I go, I feel I should tell you, James. I think you've turned into a fine man. I beg your pardon? I don't know what your problems are, but the important thing is that you have three children who love you, who are willing to see it through with you. <laughs> That's all that matters. I have some worldly goods, but I'm lonely. You may not have a dime, but you're a wealthy man. But, uh, Aunt Ethel... Believe me, Jim, I understand. <laughs> you know, maybe you'd do it that. The Andersons will be right back. If you're writing a letter overseas, remember that you can refute Soviet propaganda charges by including some simple, homely truths about the way you and your family live. Before you seal the envelope, stop a moment and ask yourself, will my letter from America make a friend for America? <laughs> The lights are on again at 607 Maple Street. Aunt Ethel is on her way to Zion National Park, and aside from a slight lingering fragrance of carrot tops, the white frame house has returned to normal. Only a couple of small problems remain to be solved this evening, and Jim and Margaret are at work on one of them. Like this. All the clothes out of the closet on the floor. Where's Kathy? In bed asleep, dear. You can discuss it with her in the morning. I'll help you put them back. <sighs> what a day. Mm, I think you came out pretty well, dear, considering. That power company, making me pay that bill twice. Wait till I go down there in the morning. Hmm. Jim, how long has it been since you wore this gray suit? A uh, couple of weeks, why? I wouldn't go down to the power company in the morning if I were you. Why not? Here's the gas and light bill and your check. What? And my letter to Aunt Ethel, they were in your pocket. Seems you forgot to mail them, dear. Oh, well, what's the difference? The children love me. Next week, when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. In our cast were Gene Vanderpile as Margaret, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, Norma Jean Nilsson, Irene Tedrow, Bill Foreman, and Don Stanley speaking. Father Knows Best, directed by Andrew C. Love, was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. <laughs>